have lemons make lemonade, but not on Twitter. Former <laughs> CNN host Don Lemon just got X'd on X, which of course was formerly known as Twitter. It seems in Lemon's rise from the cable news ashes, he outdid himself again. Lemon's The Don Lemon Show was supposed to premiere on X, and his first interview subject was said to be Elon Musk. However, apparently the interview did not go as planned because it's now debuting on YouTube this coming Monday. According to the New York Times, the two men filmed a 90-minute long interview at Musk's SpaceX office in Austin, Texas. There were tense exchanges reportedly during questions about Musk's reported drug use, the upcoming presidential election, and also his business dealings. Musk then called off the partnership the next day. Here's how Mr. Lemon says it all went down. I believed that this was the best possible chance for the work that I'm doing to reach the largest amount of people. So speaking of free speech, right, I thought the first person interview, no brainer, Elon Musk, the man who calls himself a free speech absolutist. I asked him to do it. He willingly agreed to the interview. Throughout our conversation, I kept reiterating to him that although it was tense at times, I thought it was good for people to see and hear our exchange and that they would learn from our conversation, learn more about him, learn more about me. But apparently, free speech absolutism doesn't apply when it comes to questions about him from people like me. Elon Musk tweeted Wednesday evening, free speech is the bedrock of democracy. Don Lemon responded to that, saying clean up on aisle X. So, yeah, this was a pretty dramatic look. I said on the show, I like a lot of what Elon Musk purports to stand for. I'm grateful for the transparency of the Twitter files. Um, that said, this seems to be, and, and you know, if, if there's something we've missed here, and if Elon Musk wants to set the record straight, he is free to do so. It very much does seem to me like he wanted a sycophantic interview and didn't quite get that and retaliated against Don Lemon. Don Lemon isn't entitled to have a show on Elon Musk's platform, but given everything Elon Musk has said about wanting to have free speech and dialogue, et cetera, to, to you know, unless the interview, and I, you know, I guess we'll have to watch it later, if it was like gratuitously insulting or something, doesn't sound like it, but I guess I'll wait to make that judgment. This seems like very much a kind of self own or slap yeah. in the face to his own, I mean, look, must own principles. We'll listen to it and, you know, questions about drug use. I didn't know that there was any there there. I've never really, I don't, I guess maybe I haven't, don't, 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 uh, I didn't dive that deep into Elon Musk's past or personal habits or life. That he's might a, he's feel a, a little. They're all, you know, well, know. sure, but I wouldn't expect to sit down for an interview and have random questions about right. like recreational drug use to the extent that it's legal and right. uh, like relatively normalized in society. Um, so, you know, I could see that being off-putting, but he's dealing with a bigger kind of messaging issue here. And uh, it's an issue that has infected this whole kind of sector of commentary, which is that they posture as vanguards of free speech but they typically only speak to incredibly like-minded people. And obviously having kind of uh, difficult conversations and supporting free speech are two different things, right? It doesn't mean you have to constantly put yourself in antagonistic situations or have uh, interviews with um, people who are, are not like-minded. But part of their kind of image building is that they are not afraid of tough conversations, that everyone else is a snowflake, um, that they can withstand the pressure, that they don't need DEI to protect their fee fees. Mm -hmm. And so when you sit down with someone like Don Lemon, who isn't exactly known as the world's sharpest, harshest interviewer, I mean, he has a career and is famous more because he's got a good personality and he's warm and he's kind of gregarious and he's kind of snarky and funny and catty and likes to get drunk and have fun on those New Year's episodes. <laughs> you know, it, it does make you come off as a weak and easily aggrieved party, especially because it's not just that he came out of this interview and said, I didn't like how this interview went and I don't like Don Lemon. He canceled what was apparently planned to be a relationship between Don Lemon and X. And we also know that this is not the first time this has happened. You know, it's been pretty well documented and shown that the relationship between Elon and Matt Taibbi yep. fell apart because Elon was very unreasonably thin-skinned mm -hmm. in his dealings with Matt. Matt is someone who is unbelievably fair mm -hmm. and and generous and easy to work with and, and was helping to show a lot of the thing. It, it was a good and fruitful and publicly beneficial partnership yeah that collapsed because of Elon's complete 
lack of understanding with respect to Substack and what was going on there, and 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 he was just like substantively wrong about what the con there was not actually a conflict yeah. there it was very manufactured so if that hadn't happened i might shrug at this but since i already know the details of that pretty and not well just I'm that. Like, this seems another example but also the whole situation with barry weiss she was the first one to be booted out of the yeah. twitter files coverage because she pointed out how inconsistent musk was being with respect to his free speech values when he banned the elon jets account from twitter because he argued that it was doxing him and making him and his children unsafe, the kind of language that this kind of political cohort makes so much fun of. And that wasn't even the case. The guy was using publicly available uh, information about airline traffic to talk about where Elon Musk was. So, you know, I think that he's kind of run that reputationally into the ground. But the question is, does it matter? Yeah. Because let's go back to the initial you know, start of all of this, which is that they only, this community of people tends to talk to, about, and reinforce each other. We saw this at the beginning of the Republican primary season when Ron DeSantis launched his campaign in this Twitter spaces that for technical reasons and other reasons was widely considered to be pretty disastrous. But you had the same kind of uh, group of players weighing in all the time. You can get um, Vivek Ramaswamy and Ron DeSantis and Elon Musk and David Sachs and, um, you know, the, those kind of people all in a room together and they mutually reinforce each other. And when you listen to that, it was everyone telling each other how amazing they were and how I'm, I'm going to buy a Tesla or I've got three Teslas in the garage and you're the greatest person ever. And maybe you genuinely do just really like Elon Musk and you think his cars are great. But it makes for boring conversation, boring content, and ultimately, I think it has caused some of these folks to live in a bubble and not have any expectation of being challenged or have any ability to handle it when they are. Sure. I mean, to be clear, I think it's benefit. These voices, these perspectives are not often featured in the mainstream media, and so there is a benefit to just having a place where they can exist, but you're Elon right Musk in that. and David Sachs can't go on Fox News anytime they want. And frankly, I, I believe Elon can, can get other an audience. They can go on right-wing, other conservative but no one, No one at MSNBC is turning down an interview with Elon Musk. Right? Like, I, I don't think that that's necessarily the case for them. Are you kidding? The when they cut them. away from him and when he started talking about his views on X, Y, or Z? I mean, that's the... Uh, they, they wouldn't. They 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 won't play part, uh, uh, Tucker or Trump talking about election subjects. Yeah, but that's, that's what that's, I'm saying. That's for a different reason. The, they definitely. I completely validate that they have made the choice to de-emphasize, de-platform, whatever you want to call it, Donald Trump, because of the perception that focusing so much on Trump in 2016 mm -hmm. enabled him to be president. I know you can ha feel whatever you feel about that, but that's the perception. But some of these other figures, they love to have on and boost. Look at the extent to which even someone like um, RFK Jr. has gotten much more of a hearing on MSNBC or CNN than someone like Marianne Williamson, because they feel there is this kind of appetite for... I mean, they cut away from him at parts. And they'll, look, they'll beat up on the people when they come on. Well, there's I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying that it's not an antagonistic interview, but there's an appetite sure. to see that. I mean, I hear you on the, you know, people who talk about how good free speech and debate is have a tendency of not actually practicing that much. They I've go on Bill Maher and they yeah, talk yeah, yeah. about how um, terrible everybody else is. Yeah, frankly, it's it's just you and me. <laughs> I mean, uh, and like the I'm only saying. ones in the whole ecosystem of media that actually have sincere disagreements and do regulate, not for every single segment, because we would, we would be drive <laughs> each other crazy. Yeah, it's, it's not healthy. But we do do a fair amount of actual debating, unlike so-called right. debate shows, where it's just they only right. talk about the things they and, and I will say, I think there is a pretty healthy debate culture that's happening in some spaces. I, I will give credit to Pierce Morgan for having a lot of yes, different voices on, on people like Norm Finkelstein and uh, Rabbi Shmuley yeah. and those kind of debates. Frankly, our sister channel, News Nation, does feature a bunch of people from across the spectrum as evidenced by by that Cuomo Tucker thing they right. just did, which right. actually was an example of people right. disagreeing, and they didn't just talk about the things they right. they agree on; they had an actual debate. On but I, I also subjects. do want to give credit to. I think the debate internet space is much more robust, for better or for worse, uh, for worse on the left, and you mm -hmm. do see you know big Twitch streaming channels like. Destiny and Vouch and um, Haas and Piker talking to each other and having really energetic debates uh, among the broad left, but there are a lot of divisions within there and are constantly, people like um, uh, uh, Nathan Robinson at Current Affairs are constantly reading the books and writing articles about conservative thinkers and asking them to debate him and most of them 
decline to do so. Hmm. So, you know, I think the appetite is certainly there, but are any of these big heavy hitters actually going to show up? And when they show up, are they going to go uh, crying off stage because they can't take the heat of the Don Lemon? <laughs> can't take the heat. Get out of the kitchen. More rising right after this.